Mm-hmm. Good morning. How are you? Fine. Uh, teacher. Yes. I I haven't done the presentation. Okay, so yes, you will do it today. Uh, At the end. Uh, uh, I don't know if only me or it's you and I guess another person, but you will do it at the okay. end. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Good morning, Luis. Good morning, teacher. How are you doing? Uh, Luis? How are you? Good. Yourself? Very good. Good, good, good. We also have Karen. Good morning. Good morning, teacher. Good morning, everybody. How are you doing, Karen? Good morning. How are you doing, Karen? I'm okay. Okay, good. And we also have Elizabeth. Good morning, Elizabeth. I know that you're driving right now, so just good morning. Yes, good morning, teacher. Okay, I hope you're doing well. And be careful while you're driving. Okay, thank you. Good. So let's start with the attendance for today. So you're going to see uh, the attendance on the screen. You say present when you hear your name. Isaac Aguillon is not here. Um, Hassan Alfaro? Present. Rodrigo is not here. Carlos is not here. Um, Osvaldo is not here. Alfredo? So Alfredo, but he's not here. German is from Insaford. Elizabeth, she's there, she's driving. Um, good. Jordi? Jordi Castro? Present. Good. Winston is not here. Natalie? Here. Francisco? Here, Renee is not here. Luis Liotti. Present. Good. Roxana. It's not here. Karen. Present. Good. Oscar is not here. Raul is not here. Jaime. It's not here. Carla. Present. Walter is not here. Michelle is not here. Candy is not here. And the last one, Brian is not here. Okay. So as you know, this week is the last one. So that means that we are about to finish the level and you are about to have vacation. So take advantage of these last classes because I guess you will have at least three weeks vacation, at least. So just try to, to be in class and then you enjoy your vacation. Obviously I will be sending you some activities so that you can be, you can be probably at home practicing a little bit. And in that way you don't forget all the things that you have learned. Now for the ones who were asking about the activities in week number four, they are already in Schoology. So you access there, and I guess it was Roxana. She's not here right now, but Roxana was asking me for a, um, the list of verbs. So if you remember last time I sent you a link where you had a list of verbs followed by, by gerunds, infinitives, and, and the rest. But I also did it on Schoology. So you can go to Schoology and you will find Gia, I guess it's called. Yes, I guess it is called Gia. So you go to week number three and you will find a file that is called Gia. If you open it, you will find exactly um, the verbs that you can use with infinitives, the verbs that you can use with gerunds, the verbs that you can use with both uh, gerunds and infinitive with the same meaning the verbs that you can use with uh, genus and infinitive and different meaning. And also you will find um, 
like examples for each uh, category. So you can take a look at it and you can also start working on that. Then uh, you will have exercises. Those exercises are about uh, so and such and so you can complete them. And the homework number two is about the topic that we are going to have today. That this topic is also important and it is a little bit confusing for some people, but it's not going to be for you because it is easy. So I'm going to share with you the screen so that you can see what we are going to do. And as you know, this unit is about accounting. So I think that there is only one person in this group in accounting. So probably this person knows about this information. And I guess that person is Hazael. So what we are going to do is to interpret information from a financial statement of a company. So this is a financial statement. Now, I know that some of you don't know about uh, these things, but it is a good idea to have a general, uh, let's say, comprehension about this. And probably Hasael can help us about uh, the definitions of the words. Maybe Hasael doesn't know the, the words in English, but probably someone else knows the words in Spanish. So this is called Consolidated Balance Sheet, January 31st, 2017. So if you remember that balance sheet, it is, I don't know if I'm making a mistake, as I said, probably you can help me, but the balance sheet is created only once a year or not? Uh, no. Uh... En español se puede crear en, eh, a un periodo específico o intermedio, pero obligatoriamente para, para comparar años, si, si se hace una foto, cómo quedamos a ese, año, a ese momento o al final del año, y se compara con el año anterior para ver la, la variación que ha tenido la empresa. Ok, good. Thank you, Hassan. So that's why you create this balance sheet, just to compare how the company was in the previous year, or maybe as Hazel said, in a period of time. So you can compare how you were in the past and how you are right now. So here you have um, the consolidated balance sheet for a company, and this was on January 31st in 2017. So here you have the current assets, uh, current liabilities, the stockholders equity, and at the end, uh, you have like stockholder equity in total, the total for current liabilities and the total, total for current assets. So let's start with the first part. What's the definition of assets? Do you know the, the meaning of that word, assets? There is vocabulary that we studied last level. No. No, I don't know. Is the is the old property for the company? Uh, okay. You say it's separado, separado. Separated. Separated by category. Uh, and registered in in a specific account. Exactly, in specific accounts. Good. Now, then we have cash in equivalence. What is the meaning of cash? Money. Money. Good. Money. In equivalence, why do you have equivalence? What is equivalent for cash? Bank. 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 Exactly. Bank. And also you have another one that is? Another one that is? You have checks, 
yes you have checks you have bank accounts and like that so that is the equivalent for cash and at the end you have the total current assets that is like um all the the things that you have in the company including bank cash and the rest of things that you can have then you have the total assets that is like adding the cash and also the total current assets and you will have a total then you have uh current liabilities what's the definition of liabilities the obligation of the company good. with others good has it so the, uh, the liabilities are obligations that the company has. For example, the passive. Things... Sorry? The passive. Uh, o sea, el yes. Pasivo. Yes. Pasivo. Yes, it, it's a passive, in other words. Because it is everything that you have to pay, everything that you have to take out of the company. So those are liabilities. And then you have accounts payable. Payable. What's the meaning of payable? The service and product uh, the company uh, buying pays. Uh, base. Yes. Base the the others uh, people uh, yeah. if you if your provider. The provider. The providers or the suppliers. Providers, suppliers. 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 The suppliers of the company. Exactly. So payable it's something that you can pay. So when you say account payable are all the things related to people or companies or services that you have to pay. And at the end you have the total current liabilities. And the next one is stockholders equity. First of all, what is the meaning of stockholders? What's the definition of stockholder? No? Sorry? Is uh, Elizabeth? Yes, Elizabeth? Like, uh, like a stakeholder. Okay. Good, good, good. So the stockholder is like if, let's say that we have a company together or the classroom is a company. So I'm not the only owner of the company. Yes, I'm not the only one. You are the owner too. Everyone has a percentage. So you are stockholders of the company. You don't say actionist, you say stockholder. Yes. Now, what is equity? What's the definition of equity? Teacher, disculpe. Yes. Stakeholders no es partes interesadas. Yes. Aquí lo, tomamos, aquí lo tomamos como capital o, no. o accionista. Stakeholder. Stakeholder yeah. es, es interesado. Sorry? Uh, stockholder. Uh, ah, no. Confundí It's la different. palabra. Stockholder is accionista. Exactly. Stockholder is accionista. Is like, uh, as I was giving you an example, Thank you. in mind that we, uh, we have a company. So... I have 10% of the company, Hazael has 10%, Luis has 10% of the company, Jaime 20% because he has more money, uh, then probably Elizabeth 30% because she has more money, and then everyone is going to have more uh, percentage of the company. So I'm not the only owner of the company. We all are stockholders because we created the company. We invested in the company yes so that's the definition of stockholder and the word equity what is yeah. equity what's the meaning of equity
Jaime. Asael. Capital. Yes, in other words, it is like the money. Yes. So then you have common stock. Common stock is like uh action item. Sorry? Who said it, Luis? Action. Yes. Yes. It is, exactly. It is the common one, like a specific quantity. And then you have capital surplus. What is capital surplus? The initial capital. The initial capital. The initial capital with the, the, the owners uh, include to the to the company to to put to the company to to build the company okay good and at the end you have the total stockholder equity which is like the addition of the two uh sections that you have before now this vocabulary is related to accounting so let's see this to information they have over here. The first one is a question and I'm going to ask Alfredo. Alfredo, how much is the total of assets and liabilities in 2017? The total of assets and the total of liabilities in 2017. So you need to use a calculator, I guess. But before that, I want <clears throat> Jaime, what is the amount for cash and equivalents? Can you read the the quantity? Wow, it's a uh, one million uh, six six hundred eleven thousand. I think. <laughs> no, because you have three zero later. Oh, Let's okay. see another person. Uh, Rodrigo, what would be the amount of money for cash and equivalent that you have on the screen? Where it says January 31st, 2017. Um, I think it will be 1 billion. 611 million. Good. Good, 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 good. So it is 1 billion. 1 billion. Why? Because as you can see, you don't have six numbers after one. You have nine numbers. So it is 1 billion 611 million. Now, number two, um, Jaime the total current assets. Okay, uh, six billion, uh, 480 million. Okay, good. Now, what is the total? Um, I guess the person was Alfredo. So what is the total of friend? Uh, 8 billion. 22 billion. 22? For... Yeah. Oh. The, to the dollar, the uh, to dollar asset plus liability. Oh, no, but I'm asking you just for the total assets. Right now, ah, only total sorry. assets. Sorry. Eight billion ninety one mil million. Okay, good. Now then you have accounts payable in total current liabilities. What is the total?
fourteen billion three hundred thirty nine million. Okay, good, good. And then you have the total. So how much is the total of assets that you mentioned that it was eight billion plus the liabilities that you mentioned that were uh, 14 billion. So what is the result for the addition? 22 billion. 22 billion. Million. Okay, so imagine how much that company earns in a year. So we are talking about a big, big company. I don't know if that company exists for real. Maybe something related to what? Maybe Apple, something related to technology, probably. Probably. Uh, because it Amazon. Is switch. Amazon. Amazon is. Maybe. It's worse. I don't know, but. Maybe because it needs to Walmart be. Walmart, too. A Walmart, huge too. Company. Okay. Good. Yeah, it has to be a huge, huge company. Now, question number two. This is for. Let's see. This is for Jaime because he he will have problem with the electricity in some minutes. So he might leave if that happens. So Jaime, if we add eight hundred sixty seven million dollars and two thousand five hundred eighty four millions the result is in other words in other words what is the result for oh what what is the result for the total stockholder equity in other words because you have 2,000 plus 867. Billions. 451 millions. Okay, good. So at the end, that was a total stockholder equity. So can you mind that amount of money? So they are super rich. Now let's see, Luis, what do you do, Luis, if you are cold? The weather today was like colder than previous days. So what do you do when you get cold? What do you do when you get cold? When you start shaking, so what do you do? I, I, I will wear a, a sweater. A sweater? Okay. Yes. Good. I am, um, and and uh, and jeans. Good, good. Okay. So this is what I was telling you at the beginning of the class. Sometimes people confuse the answers. Uh, and they always give answers like in the future, I will, I will, like Lewis did it. But the, the correct structure is not in the future. The correct structure is in the present. And we are going to see why. The other one that Lewis mentioned exists because it exists. But you use it in a different situation, not in the one that, that I was asking you. Because Lewis said... Uh, I could... I could wear. I could wear, probably. I or could you, wear. Or you only say, I wear. I wear a sweater. Yes. When I am cold, when I am cold, or when I feel cold, I wear a sweater. This is something that you usually do 
when that situation happens. Yes? So this is called zero conditional. And this zero conditional is like something that we call cause and effect or action and reaction. Yes, cause and effect or action and reaction. Now, when are you going to use it? You're going to use it when you want to express, as I mentioned before, that if you do something, you have a reaction always. Not only in the future, not in the past, but always. You know that that is the reaction, always. Yes? Now, you also use it when you want to imagine a situation, but you imagine the situation and you know the consequence. You know for real, you are sure that that situation happens always. Yes? So, how can you tell this in other words? This is like if I ask, let's see, Michelle. What do you do, Michelle, if you feel hungry? What do you do if you feel hungry? I I find it. I find to eat. I find. find uh, something find to eat. eat. Uh -huh. sure. I find. <laughs> Find is encontrar. Find. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, I search something to eat. Okay. Search is buscar, but search is on the internet. Okay. <laughs> I get, <laughs> I get something, something to eat. <laughs> Probably. Or I look for. I look uh, for I... something to eat. I look for something to eat. So. This is something that Michelle does when she's hungry. So, are you sure about that, Michelle? Yes. Yes. So, Michelle is sure because she knows that every time that she feels hungry, she looks for something to eat. Always. She knows that it is like that. Yes? Now, let's see, Walter. Walter. What do you do if you feel sick? If you feel sick, like oh, you have fever, so what do you do? If I uh, feel sick, I uh, took a medicine. Take. Take, take a medicine. Okay, so if I feel sick, I take some medicine and that is correct Walter that is correct yes I take some medicine now this is always that Walter feels sick he takes medicine and he knows that he does that he doesn't go to the doctor because he says no I don't want to go to the social security they spend too much time so I take some medicine so this is something that Walter says yes that he always does. He won't do it in the future. I'm not talking about something that he will do in the future. I'm talking about something that he always does when that situation comes to his life. Yes? So, um, the other one that is using will is different because will, you want to express that if a situation happens right now, you will do something in the future. For example, Walter can say, if I get really sick today, I will go to the doctor tomorrow. Yes, and that is different. An action that happens today, but the consequence will be in the future. Yes? Now I will ask Hazael, Hazael, what do you usually do if you have money? When you have money, what do you usually do? I go to buy... Uh, I go to buy... 
Full. Good. So you see. I go to buy some fuel. Okay, so this is what Hassel said. If I have money, I go to buy some food. This is like in Spanish. Si tengo dinero, yo voy a comprar al, al, uh, a, algo de alimento. Comida, o algunos alimentos. Good. Entonces, esto sucede siempre que Hassel tiene dinero. Si tengo dinero, voy a comprar algo de comida. Yes. Always, not in the future. In this one, if, si, condition, si tengo dinero, voy a comprar algo. Si no tengo, no. So, that is the condition. The condition is, if I have money. Yeah. Now, for the zero conditional, and this is the only one, yes, this is the only one, that you can replace it by using when. So you can say, when I have money, when I have money, I go to buy some food. And the meaning is exactly, exactly the same. Then if you say, if I have money, you can say, if I have money or when I have money. When this situation happens, this is my reaction. Yes? Now let's analyze the second one. The one that Lewis said is for the future, a consequence in the future, but that is not zero conditional. That is first conditional. You have four different types of condition. You have zero conditional, you have first conditional, you have second conditional, and you have third conditional. So, Zero conditional is super easy, super, super easy. First conditional, it's easy, easy. Second conditional, a little bit complicated, a little bit. And uh, third conditional, complicated. So the intensity with conditionals is increasing when you are moving from one to another one. So the zero conditional that I was telling you is the example that we had with Hazael. Hazael said, if I have money, I go to buy some food. So, and we said that we can replace this sentence. If I have money, I go to buy some food. We can use it by saying when. When I have money, I go to buy some food. Now I can ask Hazael again. Hazael. I mean, look, this is the, the zero condition, no? Exactly. This is zero okay. conditional. Okay. And the zero conditional is an action in the present with a reaction in the present. And this situation is always like that. Always. You know that that situation happens. In this situation, you know yourself. You know yourself. And then you say, oh, Michelle said, if I feel hungry, I look for some food. So she knows that that is her reaction whenever that situation happens in her life. Because maybe if I ask Walter, he's going to say, maybe if he's married, he's going to say, if I am hungry or if I feel hungry, I ask my wife for food. But Michelle is not married, or I don't know. But in my end, she's not married, so she doesn't have a person who cooks for her. So she looks for some food. So the situation is different, depending on the person. Yes? But in the zero conditional, the situation is different. In the zero conditional, you have to imagine that if something happens in the present, what will be the consequence in the future? For example, Hazael, if you have money this week, the Christmas bonus is coming, or I don't know if you have already received it, but if Christmas bonus comes this week, 
what will you do with that money? I, I go, I, no, I will go, I will go the buy the clothes for my daughter. Good, good, good. So if I receive the Christmas bonus this week, I will buy or I will go to buy new clothes for my daughter. So if an action happens today, you will have a reaction in the future. So that is called zero conditional. And this is what Louis said uh, in my question. But I was asking him, what do you do when it is cold? Every time that the weather is cold, what do you do? So I didn't ask you, what will you do? If it is cold today, what will you do tomorrow? No, it is, what do you do if it is cold? What do you do all the time that is cold? See? So uh, since you're saying two different situations, in one you're saying present and present, and in the other one you're using present and future, so that means that the tense is different. So since you have different tenses, just try to imagine that the first conditional is for the future, zero conditional is present. Yes, so you have present and present. And you know that the situation is always like that. Yes, so let's see another example. Rodrigo. Oh. Yeah. What do you do? when you get a cramp cramp is like usually i don't get i don't get cramps so no, i don't no. know i'm not telling you eat what do you usually do when you get a cramp yeah i don't usually get cramps really so yeah yeah i i don't know what to do so, i mean the last one i think it was 15 years ago what? I don't get cramps. Good. Do you play soccer? Mm, no, but I work a lot. I have two huskies, so I work um, a lot. Okay, good, good, good. I know good. that you need to eat a lot of potassium, so you don't get cramps. So I eat a lot of fruits. Maybe that's why I that's don't have why. cramps. Good, 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 Rodrigo. So you are healthy. Good. So a cramp is something that happens to you when you're sleeping sometimes. When you're sleeping, when the weather is cold and you move your legs, you get a cramp. Or sometimes when you are playing soccer and you are running and then you have a cramp over here. When you are swimming, when you are swimming, you get a cramp and that is dangerous. Yes, I was I was swim in the I I, I was swim, swimming in the past, and I I I had yeah. problems. Yes, it is dangerous. That happened to me too. That happened to me too, and it is dangerous because imagine that if you are in a deep, uh, let's say pool, maybe you will die because. I don't know. I, I'm not a swimmer, but maybe someone here is a swimmer and you know if you can swim only with one leg, maybe like dog style, probably. But just that, because you have to move your legs. So probably, but it is dangerous. It is dangerous. So that's a cramp. And then he says, I hardly ever get a cramp. So it's not his situation, but he says, that he knows that information. Now, who gets cramps frequently here? Who gets cramp frequent? No one? Just to know. Last the... year. Okay, Louis. I'm... What do you Last do, year. Louis? When Last this... year. No, but I mean, usually, that you usually get cramps. Usually. No, In because if we said last year, 
is different. We are talking about the yep. past and I need someone who has that problem with frequency that if this happens in the present, you know the result. No one? In my case, uh, I stretch my leg. Okay, good. So does it happen to you very often? Or at least in a year, every year, like every six months? Rarely. Okay. So let's say that Walter has that problem uh, three times in a year. Yes. So when I have a cramp, I stretch my body, he said, or the part of the body. So this is something that you always do when that situation happens in your life. Yes. So that is zero condition. Yes, zero condition. Now I'm going to share the screen and we are going to see what happens over there. It says, what do we do if we have very low assets? What do we do if we have very low assets? Yes. Or if we have low assets, we have to even up prices. We have to increase prices or we have to even up prices if we have low assets. So you can switch the positions and the meaning is exactly the same. So Walter can say, if I have a cramp, I stretch my body. Or he can say, I stretch my body if I have a cramp. And the meaning is the same. Hazael says, if I have money, I go to the supermarket. Or I go to the supermarket if I have money. Or Michel, Michel said, if I feel hungry, I look for something to eat. Or she says, I look for something to eat if I feel hungry. And the meaning is exactly, exactly the same. What is the difference? The position of the sentences. But the meaning is the same. And you need to pay attention. Because when you start with if, as you can see in the number two, when you start with if, you need a comma after mm -hmm. the first sentence. You're saying if, and you have a comma. If we have low assets, comma, we have to even up prices. But if you switch positions, if you say we have to even up prices, if we have low assets, you don't have a comma. Yes? The comma is only when you start with if. If you don't start with if, you don't use commas. And why do you use a comma? Because you need to divide the two sentences. Yes? And why don't you use the comma in the, in the second sentence or in the second example? Because if is dividing the two sentences. Yes. So that's the reason. Now, if you don't want to say if only in the zero conditional, if you don't want to say if, you can say when. And the meaning is the same. Like if you say if. If si tengo hambre, busco algo de comer. Or cuando tengo hambre, busco algo de comer. And this is only with zero conditional. You cannot do it with first conditional. Uh, you cannot do it with uh, second or third conditional. This is only with first conditional. So you can use if or you can use when. Now, where does your family go if they need a loan? Oh, when my family needs a loan, they go to the bank. Or my family goes to the bank when they need a loan. Or if they need a loan. And the meaning is the same. Now, questions, guys? No? No. Okay, good. Now let's see. Here you have the exercise number five, and it says, 
complete the sentences using the words provided and the correct verb. So in parentheses, you have the verbs that you're going to use. This is completing the exercises using zero conditional present and present. So let's complete number one. This is going to be for, let's see who added recently. Oscar. It says, if I, and in parentheses you have the verb that you have to use, and then it says I, and then you have in parentheses what you have to use. So how do you complete the two sentences to give the idea that whenever that situation happens in your life, you always have the same reaction? Oscar? If I wake up late, I um, in, in my case, yes, in your case, but with that information. Okay, if I wake up late, I use the verb in parentheses. I I will I will be late for work. Will, will is the future and we are not talking about the future. We are talking about something that always that you always do when that situation happens. So you say if I wake up late or if you want to translate it, it is like si, si yo siempre me levanto tarde o si yo me levanto tarde, o cuando yo me levanto tarde, traduzcanlo más como cuando para que puedan completarlo aquí con el presente, no con el futuro. So, when I wake up late, what is the consequence? I... In parentheses, you have the verb, Oscar. I be. Yes, but you need to. Uh, the bread. You cannot say I be. I be doesn't exist. So you need to conjugate. I be late. I be late for work. No. What is what is the verb be in the present? Uh, is are am. Oh, okay, so you cannot say I be. You need to conjugate it. How do you say it? I am late for work. That's the answer. Now, can you repeat it? All the sentences? If, if I will, if I wake up late, I am late for work. Exactly. So you say, if I wake up late, I am, I am late for work. It means when I wake up late, I am late for work. I always arrive late for work. That is what you want to express. Something that always happens. Not that will happen in the future. We are talking about something that always happens when this situation comes to your life. Yes? So if I wake up late, I am late for work. If I wake up late, I take a quick shower. If I wake up late, I don't have breakfast. If I wake up late, I run. If I wake up late, I drive fast. If I wake up late, I only drink a cup of coffee. If I wake up late, I no, I call my boss. Yes? So you always describe what happens if this situation comes to your life. What do you usually do? Yes? That's a thing. Now let's see next one, number two. Raul, how do you complete it? It says, my son, and then you have burned the food, if he, and then alone. Raul Reynosa. Raul.
Well, I guess he isn't there. So next person, Rene. My son, na 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 na. If he, na 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 na. <clears throat> My son bore the food if he cook it alone. Okay, so this is the present. So in the present, when you say he, she, and it, you need to use the S in the verb. Now, how do you say it? I'm in present, okay. Uh, my son burns the food if he cooks alone. Perfect. My son burns the food if he cooks alone. So you're saying, mi hijo quema la comida si cocina solo. O siempre que él cocina solo. Yes? Sure. So if you, if you cook with your son, he doesn't uh, burn the food. Yes? So I need that you complete number three, number four, number five, and number six. Sure. I will give you... And, yes? And it's correct say... Uh, if he is cooking alone no no because you you're saying if you're saying if he's cooking alone it's only right now not every time you're saying that is right now and that is not possible it's like if you say si mi hijo está cocinando si 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 mi hijo está cocinando solo el quema la comida no Si mi hijo cocina solo, siempre que él cocina solo, él quema la comida. Dicho de otra manera es algo que siempre va a pasar. Algo que siempre va a ser la reacción si algo sucede. Si mi hijo cocina solo, yo sé que él siempre quema la comida. ¿Sí? ¿Sí? So you cannot describe an action in progress right now because it is only right now. And this situation is about something that always happens when a situation comes to your life. Yes? Okay, so now complete number three, four, five, and six. I will give you three minutes. Teacher. Yes, teacher. In the first sentence, um, is when the first word. Yes. Sorry, it's missing the letter N. When. In the number four, it is when. When, okay. when. Good.
Dicho. Yes. Uh, the word whether is synonym the of the if. Exactly. Good question. Whether is the same as if you say if. You can say if or whether. And when I know use the 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 word and and no, the situation. You can, you can use it instead of if. If you want to say if, you say if. If you want to say whether, you say whether. And with zero conditional, you can use when. When I wake up late, I am late for work. Mm, okay. But Thank with you. with first second and third conditional you can use whether or if but you will never use when so that's a difference with the zero conditional you can use if you can use when you can use whether but with first second and third conditional you cannot use when you only use if or whether and the meaning is the same so you can use whether or if as you prefer okay Thank you. You're welcome. For example, when I get up early in the morning, I die a little more. When you get up early in the morning? I died a little more. I more un poquito. Uh, I die a little bit more. I like that. I died a little more. <laughs> okay, probably, probably. Because you are saying that every day we are getting older, older and older. No. <laughs> or why? Because the action to get up kill me. <laughs> oh, the action kills you. I thought that you inside. said. I thought that you said because every time we are getting older and older and older, and that is true. No. Every time that you wake up, you say, oh, one day more, one day less. No. Okay. It is because it kills you. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good, good, good. Do you finish? Okay, let's see the answers. Number one, this is going to be for Winston. Well, number one and two are completed, so it has to be number three. If employees... Okay, uh, if employees uh, not eat... No, you cannot say not eat. Uh, it's impossible to say not eat. You have not eat because that is telling you that you need to create the sentence in negative form. But no eat doesn't exist. It, if employees eat No. No. Why? Because it is not possible to say that. That doesn't exist. You have to use the present, so use the present, but in negative. Yes, if, not if, it's, it's negative. Not, it's not possible to say not it. Just the auxiliary. Exactly, you need auxiliaries. Don't. Exactly. When you have a verb, you always use auxiliaries. You say don't or doesn't. In this case, as Jordi said, it is don't. Ah, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, so. Okay, okay, okay. If employed uh, don't eat, they aren't healthy. Good. If employees don't eat well, if they don't eat well, they aren't healthy. Yes, they aren't healthy. 
Good. Yes. Number four, Karen. Oh, she's in a meeting right now. Carla. Number four. Uh, when she pays her bills on time, she don't have to pay extra money. Mm, you cannot say she don't. Well, you can say it, but in an informal, informal situation. But when you're speaking correctly, you can never say she don't. She... She doesn't. She doesn't? She doesn't have to pay extra money. Good. Now, can you read it again? When she pays her bills on time, she doesn't have to pay extra money. She doesn't have to pay extra money. Good. Next one. Teacher, yes. she hasn't. No, 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 no. Because hasn't is the auxiliary has, not a verb have. Okay. Remember that you always use an auxiliary for the negative form. So what is the auxiliary in the present? Don't or doesn't? Doesn't have. Hasn't is... Sure. The, the negative form for the auxiliary has for the present perfect, not for the simple present. Yes, I mean? In the verb have, and uh, the needs uh, write with the S form, haves. No, because, haves. no because you have doesn't. Okay. And when you say doesn't, the verb is in the base form. Okay. Has is only for positive sentences, no for negative and no for questions. So it's have, no haves. Doesn't have. Okay, yeah, I got it. When, when she pays her bills on time, she doesn't have to pay extra money. She doesn't have to pay extra money. Yes? Good. Now, number five, Roxana. Number five, if the E comes, I, I comes, are good and employed receive a bonus. You are close. If the incomes are good, an employee. Employee. An employee. Mm. An employee Receive is bonus. A bonus. An employee is he or she. So an employee receives uh, okay. mm -hmm. receives a bonus. Receives. Now can you repeat it? If the incomes I can income. incomes receive uh, are good. An employee receives bonus. Yes. If the incomes are good, an employee receives a bonus. Good. Next one, Francisco, number six. Number six. Yes. Yeah. We sell more products when we know the customer's need. Good, and that is a good phrase for companies. We sell more products when we know the customer's needs, when we know what what they want, mm -hmm. yes? So uh, this is the way they use zero conditional. Now, let's see, Brian, you're going to ask Carlos Asensio a question to know what he does in some situations. So ask Carlos, Carlos, what do you do if, or what do you do when, ask him. Okay, Carlos, uh, what do you do if, uh, if you don't complete a task in time? 
if I don't complete a task on time, uh, I I ask for more time to do it. Good, 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 good. Now let's see, Walter, you're going to ask. Let's see, you're going to ask Alfredo Calderón. What do you do when you have a, a headache? Head, head, head. Headache. Headache. Oh, oh Alfred is in a meeting too. Let's see another person, Raúl. Uh, could you repeat, please, the question? What do you What do you do when you have a headache? Headache. Okay. Uh, if I had a headache, I took a pill. Can you repeat it? If I had a, a headache, uh, I, I take or a pill. I take, okay, I take a pill. Good. Now, Rodrigo, ask Rene. What do you see? What do you do if you are out of coffee? What do you do? If you are out of coffee. Mm. In other words, what do you do if you don't have coffee? Yeah. There is no coffee left in the house. If, what do you do? Exactly. What do you do if you run run out of coffee? If you run out of coffee, if you don't have coffee at home, what do you do? When I when I drink coffee. No, 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 no. no. He's asking you what do you do when you don't have coffee at home? Ah. Uh. When I don't have a coffee in house, mm -hmm. I go to the supermarket. Okay, good. I go to the supermarket. Or if I don't have coffee at home, or if I run out, run out of coffee at home, I go to the supermarket. Good. Next one, Hazael, ask Michel. Uh, Michelle, what do you do if you you don't have gasoline in the in your car? And I I go to gas stations. Yes, I go to the gas station. Good. Next one, Jordi. Ask Luis. Luis, what do you do if you are angry? Um. If you are angry. Angry, yes. Um. When I I am angry, I I I fight with another. I fight. I fight uh, so much. Okay, good. 
So that question is exactly in in the 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 forum that you have in week number four. It says, "What do you do when you get angry?" That question is over there in Foro Evaluado, so you can access over there and complete it. You have three questions that you have to answer. Good. Next one, Jaime, ask Brian. Brian, what do you do if you don't have water to minister? If I don't have water, if you if I don't have enough water, I call the company to provide me water. But they never arrive. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it never happens. Okay, good. Next one. Um, Roxana, ask. Let's see. Ask Carla. Roxana, ask Carla. Roxana? Hi, teacher. Sorry. No. Ask Carla. I oh, was in. Yes? Hey, Carla, what, what do you do if you have a bad day? Um, if, if I have a bad day, I go, I go to the beach. Good, 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 good. That's a good therapy. Good. So this is also asking for suggestions. What do you do when you have a bad day? Maybe I can do the same thing like that. Yes? Good. Now I'm going to project a video. And in this video, you are going to check more examples about zero condition. So I'm going to share it with you right now. Zero conditional. What is the zero conditional? Well, we usually use the zero conditional to talk about things which are always true or things which always happen as a result of something else. We're not talking about a specific event here, but rather something which is generally true. Hence, we often use the zero conditional for facts. For example, what do you think this mad scientist is trying to say? Sometimes the things we talk about are not facts, but rather general truths. How can we make a zero conditional statement about budget airlines in this situation? Zero conditionals can also be used to describe routines and habits. Preferences Rules and laws Causes and effects. We can even use the zero conditional to talk about superstitions.
and even proverbs. However, sometimes zero conditionals are also used for specific situations, for example, to give instructions. Ah! To offer suggestions and advice. and to make requests. Let's have a quick test to see if you understand everything using the example, if I mix hydrogen with oxygen, it turns into water. What is the function of this sentence? Is it a suggestion? A request? A habit? General truth? What is it? It's a fact. Has he mixed hydrogen and oxygen together in the past? We don't know. Is he mixing them now or will he mix them in the future? The zero conditional doesn't give us this information so we shouldn't know. However, from watching the video earlier, we do know that he will mix them soon. Otherwise, we wouldn't know. Because zero conditionals don't talk about the past, present or future. They talk about things which are always true. Now, let's have a look at the form of the zero conditional. If plus present simple, comma plus present simple. If I mix hydrogen with oxygen, it turns into water. We can also use when or unless to replace if. When I stir fry vegetables, I prefer olive oil. Unless I'm late for work, I always catch the train. Modals are common in zero conditionals and can be used in either of the clauses. If you eat too much junk food, you can get fat. Imperatives are common in the results clause when we describe rules and laws. If you're in class, don't use your phone. Give instructions. If Bill comes here again, tell him I'm not scared of him. Offer suggestions and advice. If you go to the beach, put on lots of sunscreen and make requests. If you go past the grocery store, get a few things for me, please. Instead of using the present simple, we can also use the present continuous in either of the clauses. We can even use the present perfect in either clause. So in summary, we use the zero conditional to talk about things which are always true or things which always happen as a result of something else. This includes facts, general truths, routines, habits, preferences, rules and laws, causes and effects, superstitions and proverbs. We can also use the zero conditional for specific situations such as giving instructions, offering suggestions and advice and making requests. If you've enjoyed our video, 
please visit our website at umanzu.com for more videos and subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button and like, comment and share our videos. And make sure you tell your friends and colleagues about Umonzu. Alright, so that was the explanation. And I don't remember who was asking about an example using present continuous, so you could see it over there with a specific definition. Who asked for present continuous? No one. I remember someone asked about present continuous. Who was it? No one. Who was asking about present continuous? Can you use present continuous in a sentence? Do you remember? No one. Rene. Goi. Go. Well, but I guess someone asked before. So in the example that you had in, on the video, it was very specific because the person is describing the reason why you're, you're getting fat. Oh, in, you're getting fat and you tell the reason why you're getting fat. If you are eating too much, if you are eating too much junk food, you get fat. So it is like the reason or like if you say, mm, if she is crying, imagine that you have a baby. If she's crying, it is because she's hungry. Yeah, so you're describing the reason why the person is acting like that or feels like that. Maybe in that case, you can use present continuous in conditional to describe the reason why something is happening right now. Maybe like that. But in situations like, like routines, you don't use present continuous. Only to describe the reason why something is happening right now, maybe in that case. Yes, just in that case. Now, you're going to work in pairs. And by the way, there are some people missing presentations. Raise your hands if you're missing presentation. Hazael is one. Another one missing presentation. Brian, another one. Me, teacher. Karen, another one missing presentation. No. Okay. And there was a person missing one, but I guess it was Oscar. Is Oscar here? Oscar? Yes, teacher. I guess you are missing the first presentation. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, we are going to have presentations at the end of the class. So now we are going to work in pairs. You're going to tell your classmates, well, you're going to ask your classmate different questions, right? What would you do in this situation? Yes, what would you do if you, uh, let's say, what do you do if you are angry with your boss? And then your classmate tells you, or what do you do when, you don't have money. What do you do when there is no electricity in your house? What do you do when you don't have internet access? What do you do when you don't understand a topic in class? For example, I'm going to ask, let me see. Michelle, what do you do when you don't understand a topic in class? I asked to my classmates or the teacher. Good. So I ask my classmates or teachers. Good. So that's what you're going to do. You're going to ask your classmates what they do in some situations. So ask them, what do you do when? And then you tell the situation. So first person in the first group is Brian. Brian and Hazael. Brian and Hazael, you're going to work together. In the number two will be Carlos Asensio with, with Francisco. 
in Elizabeth, but Elizabeth is driving, so she's going to be just listening to you. Number three will be Jordi with Carla. In the number four, we'll have Jaime and Michelle. In the next one, we will have Luis. Luis and Rodrigo. In the next one, we'll have Karen and Walter. In the next one, we'll have Oscar and Roxana. In the next one, we'll have Raul and Rene. Oh, and Winston is going to be with Walter too because Karen is in a meeting right now. So you're going to enter right now. Enter, guys. Yeah, oh, that's okay. So, okay. um, Asael, what, um, let me see. What do, what do if you don't have what do you uh, do? What do you do? Yes, sorry. What do you do if you don't have um, some food in your fridge? Uh, I go to the market. I go to the market? I go to the market? To buy some food. Mm -hmm. Okay. And work. I try to fix it. What do you do? But uh, at the beginning, do you have pets? Yes. Okay. What do you do if your pet are if your pets are sick? I worry, and then I <laughs> and then I take her to to vet to the vet to the vet. <clears throat> and you are right. The first reaction is to worry. Yeah, <laughs> and you react and you go to the doctor. Good, Mama. Let me see. What do you do? I li I like it. <laughs> really? But... Yes, I have I have a pet too, but it's a boxer. Oh, yes, okay. with that matter. Good. <laughs> <It's> a... <laughs> Good. Yes, I like it. Okay. What do okay. you do <clears throat> if if you have a, a lot of money? A lot of money. Mm. What do you do if you have a lot of money? Yeah. ¿Qué haces? ¿Qué haces cuando what tienes mucho dinero? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. But a lot of money is a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like hey, a I, rich. I, rich. Um, mm -hmm. I, I suppose. Mm -hmm. because... That is not possible. Because she's not rich. Yes. Acuérdense que el zero condition es para situaciones que son reales, okay. no, no yes. para hipotéticas, sino que para cosas que son reales. 
¿Qué haces? ¿Qué haces o qué sucede siempre que tal y tal cosa? Ok. What do you do if you if you have a um one thousand dollars? Wow. Well, sorry, what do you do when when you have a a money, a, a one thousand dollars? When you have one thousand mm. do you have one thousand dollar often? Yes. 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 Good. Okay. So, yeah. what do you do when you have uh, always she, she, earns, I... she earns very good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I save my money. Yes, I don't spend my my money uh, so, because yeah. I like a. Uh, I like travel to another country, and then I save my money. I like to travel. I like to travel. I like to travel. Okay. Okay. Good. So you are right, Jaime. She's rich. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> what? Yeah. It was not an imaginary no. situation. No. <laughs> Can you mind save? Because you asked her, what do you do when you have $1,000? And she said, I save my money. Can you imagine she's saving $1,000 every month? Yes. Yes. So $1,000 in a year, $12,000. So yes. $1,000, you can travel around the world? Yes. Yes, I buy, I buy a house and I buy three cars. Like She's you buy rich. or you will buy? Buy. You buy? I, I, yes. I buy, yo compro. Yes. So you buy houses? Yes. Really? In, the, in this year, I buy a house. In oh, the this year you bought? Yes. You bought a house. Ah, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Because, <laughs> because I save for money. I, I don't spend money. Okay, in, in but so your, inform your information when you told me I buy houses, I mind that you bought houses. <laughs> no, always, no. Sorry. Oh, okay. no. Sorry. Tera, no. Tera teniente. Yeah, I, said, wow. <laughs> I want to work at Tigo. <laughs> <laughs> Buy no, houses no. every month. No. <laughs> no. Okay. No. Okay. <laughs> Lisa, okay. Uh, uh, she works. Uh, for a hobbies. Oh yeah, she works for a hobby. Nah, no, <laughs> I need it. I need it my work. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, Jaime. Um, um, what do you do when you have to tell a lie, but you don't tell it? Do you want to tell? Okay. Good question. <laughs> Difficult question. Yeah. When, I, when I I want to tell a lie. Uh, <laughs> I try to 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 be serious. <laughs> I, <laughs> okay. What do hey. you do? If, if you have a, you are, are you married? No. no I know. Almost, what? I mean, almost married, she said last time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you do? I have another question for you. What do you do when you are when you are angry with your wife? Angry. Uh -huh. Remember uh, the I... the, um, the cartoon Angry Birds. So angry. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. When angry. I angry with my with your wife. wife. Okay. Yes. Um, <laughs> when I, when I angry with with my wife i try to 
respirar. Breathe. Breathe. I try to breathe for <laughs> some minutes <laughs> and disappear because I, I, uh -huh. I'm angry too much. <laughs> you, you count to 10. One, two, One. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. No, 100, but 10 is uh, it's not <laughs> enough. <laughs> and then, and then, uh -huh. the backyard. Yeah. <laughs> When you're angry with your wife, you sleep in the backyard. <laughs> every, every time. From, <laughs> that's a cool. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Good. Uh, what do you do? Lo que ha pasado es de que tuvo un bajón de energía In y el cable modem quedó inhibido. Ok. Hi, teacher. Hi. I, I try to help with the, the service on internet. Really? Yes. Well, in my, okay. case, in my case, they said that they will come to fix it. So, but they didn't come in like Two days ago, I had a big problem, but big, big problem. The thing is that I started Zoom and suddenly, like two minutes later, it was off. And then yeah, I and the, the phone number. Sorry? The phone number. The company is returned to you. What do you mean? You lost the, the number. Oh, yes. Of Yes, for, for the, the telephone number. Yes. Yes, from my house. Yes, and, and I was telling you that they reduced the, the speed. So I called them and they said that they would come, but they never came. And like two days ago, uh, I was starting Zoom and, and it started like to lose signal and then I got lost. I entered again. Same thing happened some minutes later. And then nothing, I couldn't do anything, anything, anything. So I called again and they said, yes, we are working on that. We are going to be there. They never came. I have to use the data from my cell phone just to share it with the computer. Now it is working again, but they haven't come. So I'm just waiting and then I'm going to say, I'm not going to pay anything because I have been like that for about two weeks. And yeah, he never wants to, to change the provider. Yeah, I think so. The problem is what I told you that the, there is a contract that I have to finish. That yeah. is the only problem. But good. When finish the, the contract? We renew the contract in quarantine. Oh, <laughs> one no. year more. That's a, that's a thing. Okay. That's a thing. Okay. I tell Carla the problem is the the energy is the the low down and and this is the case of the the cable model uh, have problem with with that in that is, problem and that is with Tigo yes okay Solo lo reiniciamos y ya estuvo. You only restarted. Good. Okay. Good. Well. So, Jordi, what do you do when you don't have internet at home? I don't know if that happens to you, but what do you do when you don't have internet at home? <laughs> I have always the internet in my house. I always have. Yeah, I, I always have because... Eh, no sé cómo se dice refrán. Casa Herrero Cuchillo Palo no aplica acá. Siempre resuelvo. <laughs> oh, because you fix eh, it. Ya. Yeah, ya. Yeah, I, I, I never have a problem with that because I am the responsible to the network. Good. And if I see something uh, wrong, I, I try to, to resolve Uh, before the 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 service is 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 gone. Good, good. What about Carla? What do you do when you don't have internet at home, Carla? When I don't when I don't have a internet, mm -hmm. I 
I started crying. <laughs> <laughs> Are you working from home? But 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 I uh, today I find a new solution. I I call uh, Jordi. You will call Jordi. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, every it, at Tigo, everybody is coming. We 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 had a problem. Really? Yes. <laughs> you are always busy. Uh, <laughs> usually, yes. What is the reason I, why? What is the reason or the most common reason why people uh, don't have internet at home? Is the is a thing about the drop of the cable into the house because uh, usually have a problem with the commercial energy or some connector or the the dogs is is by the the cable on then uh, uh, the they drain uh, near of the cable modem and and wet it and and that thing is the most usually uh, we we find with with the problems and how do you solve it how do you solve that problem uh, usually reset the 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 cable modem usually uh and, and or that, when you when you the the channel of wi-fi because the the interference uh about the wi-fi channel is is, is common because your neighbor uh, have uh, has internet too and they 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 have uh, a channel Wi-Fi different than you because in the same channel, the Wi-Fi of your neighbor and your wife Wi-Fi uh, in, have an interference. It's the same we you go out in the car and you change the the radio and and usually you you, you find the, the other radio station, station or radio station uh, is the same thing. I uh, it's a it's a inter interference. And, and how do you fix it? Change the the Wi-Fi channel. And how we, do you change all, it? All all the people uh, must to to into the firmware of the cable modem is about a a, a one IP is. Uh, uh, 190.162.0.1 and the the user is admin and the password is password and you into the 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 cable modem and the the template you must to to change in in that in that case because it's very easy really but uh, much uh, knowledge Yes, you have to know how to do it because yeah. if, if but, you do it properly, but, you can damage it, I guess. Sí, ya. Yeah. En español es fácil. Lo que pasa es que la gente no está acostumbrada a hacer este tipo de actividades porque ellos creen que el, el proveedor de internet tiene que resolverle todo hasta la comunicación del dispositivo móvil que muchas veces también eh, ya son viejos. La, y, y, y no pueden estar actualizados a la tecnología del momento entonces eso hace de que haya una degradación natural por, por tecnología uh -huh. entonces eso también hay que saber se lo explicar a la gente eh, por ejemplo el, el cable modem que se está utilizando, el que tiene Carla es el más nuevo de todos este tiene más capacidad de entrega usted le puede dar a la gente 100 megas y, y, y no tiene ningún problema pero la gente debe de saber de que para que usted pueda recibir 100 megas, su dispositivo móvil debe de tener capacidad de entregar también 100 megas de velocidad. Mm -hmm. O sea, esto hay un cuello de botella que la gente no conoce. ¿Ya? Y a veces la gente lo que hace es colocar repetidores. Y el repetidor normalmente es una causa de interferencia porque también emite un, una, una, un canal de Wi-Fi y ese colisiona con la del cable modem Y, y, y en vez de hacer un amplificador es un reductor entonces reduce capacidad pero como eso no se ve eso se resuelve eh, bajando una aplicación en el teléfono que se llama Wi-Fi Analyzer 
que eso es móvil. En, eso es re, en relación a donde esté su locación en el momento. Eh, usted va a poder determinar qué canal de Wi-Fi es el que está más limpio ahí. Y normalmente el cable modem en su casa está en un lugar donde usted no pasa. Se deja en la sala, pero usted pasa en un estudio o en un cuarto. Y a veces las paredes de destrucción generan atenuación natural. Entonces, y, y cuando hay demasiada atenuación, la reacción natural de, 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 del dispositivo es bajar su capacidad. ¿Por qué? Porque la comunicación no es fluida entre el dispositivo y el, y el equipo de enlace. Mi responsabilidad llega hasta el dispositivo, pero en base a las circunstancias que tenemos que ir educando a la gente, se resuelven las situaciones de esa índole y la tratamos de explicar a la persona eh, para que ya eso se vaya replicando, porque eh, eso es lo que ha sido la, eh, la, la dificultad en los últimos años, porque antes usted solo llegaba a un, a un cable modem, de ahí conectaba un cable Ethernet a una computadora de escritorio, todo, no, no, todo era fijo, en cambio ahora es móvil. Porque yeah, tiene que right. tener también un componente wireless yeah, dentro right. del enlace. Definitely. Y puedo You're pasar right. hablando todo el día de eso, así que mejor vamos a empezar. Yes. So, when I need some help, I will call you, Jordi. Yes, no problem. Okay, good. I am very popular. <laughs> Sorry? In the lockdown, everybody call me. <laughs> so, you're always busy. Yes, yes, Good. I have uh, days of 12 hours of the, the work. Okay. Good. Well, we are going to go back to main station. Okay. Thank you. Okay, guys, let's continue. But I heard some of your questions. Some of them were super funny. <sighs> Uh, well, I had a conversation with Jordi about problems oh. with the internet. What do you do if you have problems with the internet at home? And then he was saying that he doesn't have any problems because he fixes those problems. Good. Now, um, we have a presentation that is going to be, let's see, has a presentation. And also, we have Karen, but Karen is in a meeting. So, Karen, maybe you can pass tomorrow. And the other one is Brian, I guess. So, Hazael, you can start right now. Okay, teacher. Yes? Can I do today, if you want? Um, okay, if you want to do it today. If it doesn't, yes. you're meeting. It's, it's better than. Okay. So, you go after Hazael. Okay. Can you see my desktop? Yeah. Okay. Este, good morning. Uh, the last product I I bought is was a smartphone for my daughter. Uh, this this year for class she used a computer and sometimes a uh, all smartphone, but uh, this one uh, was broken. I went to Walmart to see to a baby um, and buy here uh, a new cell phone with better functions. The smartphone is a brand blue model G60. Uh, the characteristics are very good relative to price. It has HD screen, uh, three gigabytes for memory RAM, 64 internal memory. The camera is uh, 30 megapixels. The price was uh, $150. Uh, the seller showed me and explained all the function and specification, and it, it conveys me 
to buy the cell phone. After, after paying for the smartphone, they told me go to customer service, uh, go to get, to get the warranty certificate. She lady who attended me was very friendly and explained me uh, that the phone had a one year warranty for factory damage. Uh, she told me the warranty doesn't apply if the phone gets, uh, gets wet or if it is hit. Uh, my daughter is satisfied with new phone. It was a good purchase for me. I don't use the, the warranty. Uh, it's all. Good, good, Hassan. So let's give it up for him. Just check the pronunciation. It is... Um, when you say functions, it has to be functions. Functions. And the other word is related, related to, related to. And related. paying, paying, no paying, paying. Good. So now, Karen, you can project it. Can you see my screen? Not right now. In there? No. Okay. No, yes. Right? Yes. Okay. Well, I'm talking about um, about experience that I have had one time was when I decided buy clothing for my baby before she was born. Um, so I had thinking about that for a long time because I never had been an experience about buying in online. So when I decide to buy, I select clothing in an app called Alibaba. I remember I feel so excited and bought a lot of things for newborn, designs to newborn for my daughter. This is was when I was maybe six months pregnant. So uh, in this moment, uh, missing three months for my baby born. So uh, my purchases came very late maybe five months later that my baby born. And meanwhile, the sellers didn't say nothing about. I, I wrote, I wrote him, and the seller person didn't say nothing about and only checked my messages, but, she, but he, didn't nothing. I had to put a claim for my money to return, but again, uh, in the app, uh, it's didn't nothing about. So uh, finally, the clothing came, but came around six months later when my when the clothing arrived to my home. Uh, some clothes, they 
they are to the size to my, they weren't to the size of my baby. <laughs> so for me, buying in online is a bad decision. <laughs> I think only that. Okay, good job, Karen. Let's give Good job. Yes, you're right. Sometimes it is risky because you don't know exactly how much time they are going to spend uh, to send you the product. And it might be six months later. So that's too much. That's yes. right. good. Now, just one little thing. You say they didn't do nothing and it has to be they didn't do anything because nothing is not in negative and didn't is negative too so you don't have double negation you only say they didn't do anything or they did nothing they did nothing or they didn't do anything good. they didn't do anything okay anything. good well the the second option that you had was probably to sell them on facebook <laughs> yes <laughs> just to be at least some money back. Yes. Okay, good. Now let's see the attendance. First person, Isaac Aguillon. It's not here. Hazael. Present. Rodrigo. Present. Carlos. Present. Osvaldo. It's not here. Alfredo. Yeah. Present. Uh, Elizabeth. Present. Good. Jordi? Present. Winston? Present. Good. Natalie is not here. Francisco? Francisco, Francisco? No. Rene? Present. Luis? Present. Roxana? Well, she's there. Karen? Present. Present. Raul. Present. Jaime. Present. Carla. Present. Walter. Present. Michelle. Present. Andy is not here. And Brian. Present. Okay. So that's all for now, guys. We are going to continue tomorrow. I just need that you complete a survey, and I will tell you this in Spanish. Solamente necesito que llenen una encuesta que le voy a mandar al, al, al grupo de WhatsApp. Esa es la encuesta, no de Insafor, sino que de la academia. Entonces se la voy a uh, enviar, la completa. Me avisan cuando ya la hayan completado. So thank you for being there. I see you tomorrow, and have a good day. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye, it's Jim. Yeah. Buenos días.